Okay, we're back again with the second video in this series, and that is the qualifications for being a prophet. Now, we have an article to cover. We're going to start in Jeremiah 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Notice that little statement there at the end of verse 3. The prophet is called. We're going to read a couple more verses, and then we're going to jump to our article. I want to make this statement. And this applies to the previous video about apostles. The reason why God had to put specific qualifications in here for these things was for the purpose of making sure that the person who was presenting themselves as this could be quantified and qualified by people hearing them. And because there would be people who would claim something that they did not have and they could be found out easily. The reason, and people will dismiss this stuff in the Bible, but the reason why it's there was so you wouldn't, you could read the Bible and go, hey, wait a minute, that this, what this guy said was wrong. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't work. Hey, you're not a prophet. Get away from me. Get behind me, Satan. I ain't dealing with you. But what do we have people doing instead? You should have heard what that prophet said about me today. Man, he said I had a dream I was going to be rich. No. No. Not even close. Let's keep reading. Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, verse 5, here, this is the important. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set this day. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. These first 10 verses in Jeremiah 1 give us a very unique interaction between Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, and God. They show us that being a prophet isn't merely just taking a title and claiming some things and spouting some things in a YouTube video and expecting people to believe it and expecting that to be true. There's specific qualifications. You must be called. Now, the individual that is called has a very specific set of, of rules and criteria that exist around this individual. Most of the time, they were very alone. No prophet ever existed in his household without being almost utterly destroyed by those around him. Because prophets always brought very negative responses. In our article we're going to read, what are the qualifications for a true prophet? This is on Bible Ask. We're going to see some of this. Qualifications of a prophet. There are several biblical qualifications of a prophet. According to the scriptures, a prophet is someone who is used by God to communicate his message to the world. He is also called a seer because he could see dreams and visions from God, 1 Samuel 9.9. 9. The Bible gives the following as qualifications of a prophet. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because there are a lot of people claiming this. You don't want to be a prophet. Let me just tell you that right now. Now, to prophesy, like Paul said, yes, that's a good thing. But you don't want to be listed as a prophet because you are held to an extremely tight standard. And if you fail that, it will be detrimental to you for eternity. There's a lot of people throwing the term prophet around like there's something. I had a prophetic dream. No, you didn't. No dreams are prophetic. The content of the dream might be prophetic, but your dream is not prophetic. See, you've got to be able to interpret that in order for it to mean anything. Most people have no idea what their dreams mean. Most people don't realize that their dreams are probably from the very scriptures they read. And in fact, in most cases, <laughs> when they talk about a dream they had, you can go to the Bible and find all of that stuff listed in the Bible. And if you ask them, you find out that they read that re they had read that recently. So there's your inspiration for your dream. Dreams from a prophet or anything involving prophetic content is going to be very specific for 
the particular individual being spoken to or of the situation being spoken of. You don't want to be a prophet. Being a prophet is a very lonely life and a very sad life. Every prophet in the Bible was miserable. Every one of them. Horribly miserable. Re we're, we're still working our way slowly through Jeremiah. <laughs> he was called the weeping prophet for a reason. He hated his job. This isn't something to claim lightly. This is, you have to take this seriously. What we're doing here, doing these YouTube videos, there's a lot of people, oh yeah, I want to get famous. I want to get up there. I want to sell t-shirts and merch. Disgusting to me. I want to make money too. So they go out there and they start doing this. You should not be teaching people anything involving the Bible unless you're doing this from a pure heart and a desire to serve the Lord. It is not something to be taken lightly and done haphazardly. You need to make sure you're prepared for this and you need to take it seriously. There are a lot, way too many people doing videos right now talking about the Bible that do not take it seriously. They're there trying to get some, some fame and fortune. Being a prophet is not what you think it is. They will be called for service. And here's from Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5 through 10. Also, Amos 7, 14, 15, and Isaiah 6, 1 through 10. The Lord calls his prophets for the prophetic office, some even before they are born, such in the case of Jeremiah. <coughs> they will live a godly life. Now, there's a very interesting person um, that I had dealings with, especially in 2020, calling them, saying they were being used as a prophet and they were a nitwit. They had five different channels. Uh, none of the, nothing they said was prophetic. It was all stuff that we, other people had covered. They just went out there and spouted out. They ran around pointing at their camera, yelling, Abba, Father. Yet in one of their live streams, they were waiting for other people to come in. They stepped into the other room, and I could hear family members in there cussing. They were one of them. Well, that's pretty interesting. That's not very godly, is it? Let's keep reading. They will live a godly life. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew 7, 15 through 20. This particular individual person stalked me. And I had to call them out openly to get them to stop. They had five different channels, and with all five channels, stalked me on, on YouTube. I had to call them out. I called them out on other people's live streams. Faith in God must accompany good works for faith. If it hath not works is dead being alone. James 2.17 Genuine faith will find expression in unselfish acts to serve others. Thus, it was Christ and thus it will be with all who follow his example. A prophet of God will bear the fruits of righteousness. Luke 10.27 What are the fruits of righteousness? doing good things, serving the Lord, serving others. There's a lot that goes with this. You're not going to puff yourself up and try to make yourself out to something you're not. You know, no prophet in the Bible ever called themselves a prophet. The other people called them a prophet. Until the Lord came to them and said, hey, I've designated you a prophet. They never called themselves that. It was the Lord that did that. Yeah, what do we have people doing now? They're doing that. But they try to hide it saying, well, it's just a prophetic dream or a prophetic vision or a prophetic word. No, you're calling yourself a prophet. Let's be real about this. Let's not sugarcoat it. You're calling yourself a prophet. And when you're, when you found, you're found out to be a liar, they, don't, they won't admit to it. See, part of the righteous works is whenever you are wrong, you admit to it. They will not contradict the word of God. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Isaiah 8, 19-20. The word of God is the standard of truth and the guide to right living. A prophet of God will teach according to the principles of scripture. A true prophet, when giving a prophecy, will associate it with the word of God and with scriptures that pertain to the particular prophetic spoken word. How do we know this? That's what God says. That's why he gave us the word. It proves what they're saying. And then, of course, it has to come to pass. They will predict future events. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. See, you're not going to say something in a prophetic nature without God actually coming to you and saying, Hey, here's what I want you to tell them. 
I'm going to make you a prophet and speak this prophetic word to them. I'm not talking about a dream or vision. He's going to come to you and say, hey, look here. This is what you're going to do. And it's not going to be something where you're just going to be like, whoa, I just got a visit from God. You're going to be on your face. Many people soil themselves in these situations. It, is, it has a detrimental effect on the body and the stature of the human form. Read the Bible. It's in there. Every one of them has this issue. It, it, it messes up. Poor Daniel. He was sick all the time. <laughs> but the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. So the way we identify if somebody is giving a, a true prophetic word or has a true prophetic dream, it needs to come to pass. But what happens when those things fail? They're not a prophet. They've spoken presumptuously. How many people pre pretended right when the election came in saying, I have a prophetic word from the Lord, speaking like a prophet, saying Trump's going to win and Trump didn't win? How many of them stepped up and apologized? One guy I saw, one, apologized. But he said, but this doesn't make me a false prophet. Yes, it does, because you spoke in a prophetic fashion. Deuteronomy very clearly states this. These people are wrong. If they're found to be wrong, you don't listen to them. See, the true prophet, he's not going to identify himself as a prophet. God will do that. The people that hear him will do that. He won't. He doesn't need to. It's the word that's important, not him. The proof of a prophet's credentials lies, in part, in the fulfillment of his predictions. This was found true of Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, 18 through 21. <clears throat> they will have visions and dreams. Here's where people get messed up. Because they think every dream and vision they have is prophetic. No, it is not. It is uh, most of the time. In fact, probably 99% of the time it's your imagination. Or they'll say, I love this one. They'll say, this is how God communicates with me. Really? What about the Bible? Is that not his word communicating to us? Does he not say that in his own word? Yes, he does. They will have visions and dreams. Among the qualifications of a prophet is that they will have visions or dreams. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Numbers 12, 6. God has uh, ever revealed his will to his servants, the prophets, through visions and dreams and promises to continue doing so to the end of time. Joel 2, 28 and Amos 3, 7. Is every dream and vision prophetic? No. Is everyone who has a dream and vision a prophet? No. There must be specific information given from God. See, right away people are listening to this and they're like, well, see, see, it says he'll do it. No, you didn't pay attention. That's why I paused. I was waiting for everybody to realize it. You didn't pay attention. God has ever revealed to his, his will to his servants, the prophets, through visions and dreams. Now go up to the next paragraph. And he said, hear now my words. That's your key phrase right there. Hear now my words. So now everybody that's listening needs to pay close attention. If there be a prophet among you, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Now the person that he is speaking to, they're going to know who they're talking to. They will be very aware. Notice all the other prophets when they make their, 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 their declaration to the Lord. They know who they're talking to. They're very, very aware of it. All these dreams and visions you hear, what do they say? It was a being of light. I didn't recognize him, but I just had a sense. So you didn't know who you were talking to. Well, they didn't really let me know. What did God just say here in Numbers 12? I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him. See, the key is in the wording, but if you don't pay attention to the wording, you don't catch it. And here's how we can justify or, or qualify what people are saying. Who'd you talk to? Well, they didn't really give me their name. What they looked like. Well, it was just a being a light. I couldn't make anything out. And that's all they said. That's all you saw. In the, that's all that happened. Yeah. Okay, well, how do you know it was God? Why well, don't? It, it may have been an angel. No. Numbers 12, 6. I, the Lord, will make myself known to him. 
God does not give uh, prophetic utterances and prophetic things through random people. It's something that is specific and purposeful. It is not random. It is not something that is is unable to be uh, translated. How many of these dreams and visions do they have? They can't even figure out what it means. They'll get one or two aspects out of it. Okay, that's good enough. That makes it prophetic. No. A true prophet of the Lord, when he has a dream, he's going to come away going, wow. Okay, hey, y'all, you need to hear about this dream I had last night. Well, how, well, how do you know it's prophetic? Because God, it was God. He said, I am your Lord. I am giving you this to spread to the people. He will know who he's talking to. The true prophet will know who he is talking to. There will be no guesswork here. <laughs> and this is what makes me mad about this. Because people don't read their Bibles, they can't test these people to find out who they are. The Bible says test everything. Don't leave nothing to chance. Test it. How do you test it? With the word of God. So if somebody comes to you and they say, hey, I had this dream or this vision. It's prophetic. Is it? Tell me about it. And they tell you, okay, well, who were you talking to? Or who was talking to you? Well, I don't know who it was. It was just a being of light. Okay. Who do you think it was? Well, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's not prophetic. Because the Lord himself will give you this to you. He will declare himself. He will, Numbers 12, 6, make himself known unto you. You will know who you're talking to. There will be no guesswork about this. I tell everybody, who, if you think you're having prophetic dreams, ask them. At the being you're speaking with or is speaking to you, stop them where they're at and ask them, who sent you? Who In whose name do you come? Or mention Jesus Christ and see what happens. The people that have done that, and there are stories out there, the people that have done that, who thought they were getting these things, and somebody told them, hey, mention Jesus and see what happens, and they did, immediately the being disappears. It's, it's, a, it's a demon. And the Bible says Satan can show himself as a being of light, and it, is it no wonder that his, his ministers can do the same thing? You can be in the presence of a demon and not even realize it's, it's happening. This is why we have to be careful. This is why we have to look at what the Bible says about prophets. Don't just accept what somebody gives you and it sounds great and it plays up to my feelings. I've been having that feeling. Oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, this, oh, that. It's playing to the flesh. <clears throat> In our vain attempts and desires to be validated, we will latch on to any, any boat to tow us out of the water. Not realizing that most of those boats are sinking. There's only one boat that floats. And that's Christ's. And none of us need it. Because those who are walking with him walk on water. We don't tread water. Folks, you've got to know your scriptures to know how to, to test these things and to find these things out. You can't just randomly believe what people tell you. Because if you do, you're going to end up getting yourself caught up in so much deception. You're going to end up getting yourself hung up in so much confusion and you're going to be miserable all the time and you're going to be everything that happens is going to be destructive and it will be nothing that will do nothing but play to your feelings if you want real truth you must receive it how do you receive it through the word of god so if somebody brings you a dream or a vision or you see a video i have a dream or a vision prophetic dream prophetic vision listen to it that's okay to listen to it but test it go to the bible test it and then ask them, who were you talking to? If they don't answer you, don't listen to them. I have dreams and visions. I don't ever say they're prophetic. I don't know if they're prophetic. That one I had was very specific, very specific. But there was no declaration made. So it's not prophetic. It's just a, just a vision I had. You got to make sure you test these things. Don't self-glorify. Don't put yourself in a position where you can be held accountable for something that God did not give you. And that's what a lot of these people are doing. And they don't realize the damage they're causing to themselves. It's disastrous. That's why I warn. That's why I cover the scripture I cover. That's why I talk the way I do. Because I don't want to see people get into this. Because this is such a bad issue. So in the next video... As far as I know, this is good. That's good. It's going to be these three for now. But in the next video, we're going to talk about the prophetic word. We're going to figure out how to test for that. We're going to figure out how to how to find out if somebody is giving a prophetic word or not. See you guys in the next one.